to a new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Shabi, and this week we're looking at the French penitentiary system. I'm here outside the Santé prison in the heart of Paris, a site that's currently being refurbished to better accommodate inmates. This is a touchy subject in a country where overpopulated jails are a long-standing and ever-growing problem. Let's start with an overview of the situation. In June 2017, France had 69,502 inmates, 3% of whom are women, with only 59,118 prison places in total. Around 40 prisons are filled to 150% capacity, with up to four people stuffed into 9 meter squared cells. Less than 40% of French prisoners have their own cell, despite that being the law since 1875. To address the problem, 10,000 to 15,000 additional cells are planned for 2025. But prison overcrowding is an old problem. Since 1990, 22,000 new places have been built. One answer to the problem may lie in sentencing. Already, electronic bracelets are used for 10,575 convicted people. But more probationary sentences could be handed to offenders given maximum five-year sentences. This system has been offered to fewer than 2,300 people in the past two years. Repeat offenders are also a problem in France where the rate has reached 59%, as opposed to Scandinavia's 20%. To bring that number down, the French Justice Minister suggests offering prisoners more supervision when they're released to help them adjust to normal life. Well, among the initiatives that are being tested to avoid repeat offences is one that's particularly original, a jail where the prisoners hold the keys. Take a look. There's a quiet sense of order here you wouldn't normally associate with prison life. Throughout the building, inmates come and go as they please in line with an experimental system where prisoners are given the key to their own cell. It's been tried out here at Mont de Marsan prison on inmates like Alexi. It's a huge relief. We don't need to wait for the warden to get on with what we need to do, like bringing sugar or coffee to another cell. We have access to the courtyard whenever we want. We can reclaim our dignity because in normal conditions we're locked in 22 hours a day and treated like dogs. But with this new freedom, come strict extra rules. Wake up is at 7 a.m., beds must be made and cells kept pristine. Prisoners are searched more often and every detainee must carry out 25 hours work a week. So here you can see my schedule. Wake up time, work, cleaning my cell, lunch, work again, sport and then rest. Alexi works in the prisons in Angerette five times a week. It's a chance to earn 200 euros a month, but most of all, to maintain a sense of routine. Anyone is eligible from the moment they apply. Nevertheless, we don't accept inmates known for violence. Victor has been in and out of jail, with over 20 years spent behind bars. But since he was brought into the programme, he feels that a fresh start is possible. I've never gotten this far in my whole life. I was encouraged to do a diploma here. I got my driver's license and for me that's priceless. I really feel that the day I get out of here, I'll be fully equipped. The prison chief keeps an eagle eye on how the rules are being respected. Prisoners must be dressed appropriately and no verbal or physical attack is tolerated. Every prisoner is tracked with points. We've got a prisoner who earned three points because he really invested time working on the building. This one has minus two points. He's in red because we excluded him after finding he had a mobile phone. The new system's also a revolution for guards. Stefan is no longer merely a key bearer who spends his days opening and closing doors. Instead, he can devote his working hours to spending time with inmates and supporting them. We don't come to work reluctantly, unlike in normal prisons where there's still a high rate of attacks on staff. We're lucky to no longer have this kind of problem in the building. Since the scheme began in January 2015, 
there's been just one attack on staff and three suicide attempts. The results are being scrutinized. In the meantime, five other French prisons have begun trying out the program. Well, of course, if they're to be reintegrated into society, former inmates will need to find work. And that begins with getting up to speed on their training and education, including French classes. A maximum security morning commute for these two teachers that takes them through barred entries, long corridors and locked doors before they finally reach their classroom in the heart of this prison. This morning, Sylvie is taking a poetry class. She's using the lyrics of a hip-hop song. So why, like the things we looked at before, is this poetry? It rhymes. It rhymes. School is just a vague memory for 27-year-old Abdel, but now he's preparing to take exams that could give him his first academic qualifications. Now I know how much studying French helps, especially writing. She's the best French teacher. I've never had a French teacher like that. In prison, we're animals. In school, we're human beings. Sylvie chose to become a prison teacher and has been giving lessons to inmates for over 10 years. She says she doesn't see them as prisoners, but as students. Things happened which brought them here, but we don't look at that. What we look at is how they can advance in their lives and build something. It's so they can become good citizens and have a better outlook. Cécile also teaches French to inmates and shares this point of view. In 12 years, she's never thought about quitting, even in the wake of the 2015 Paris terror attacks. It was a particularly difficult moment. There was a new level of violence introduced into conversations. The minute silence kept on being interrupted, so returning to teach in these conditions was not easy. But we talked about it, and in all the classes we worked on it. Out of this prison's 1,000 inmates, 140 are signed on to the National Education Programme, hoping to be among those who manage to pass the exams every year. Well, of course, sports is another important tool to help inmates stay healthy and socialise. Here at the Central Penitentiary of saint martin de ré off the French West Coast, authorities are organising an Olympic event to mark Paris's bid to host the 2024 Games. Ce que vous a pas dit notre athlète de haut niveau, c'est qu'au dernier championnat d'Europe, il faisait partie du 4x400. Benjamin Chancelier, hello, thank you for being with us. You're one of the organizers of this day, and it's an ambitious event that brings together inmates from this center and that of Rochefort. What is the aim of this type of event? What can sport bring? The sport is key in prison because it allows inmates to socialize rather than stay isolated. That's particularly important for prisoners serving long sentences. And can sport really help avoid repeat offences? It's great for self-respect, as it's a way of taking care of your body and learning about hygiene and health care. It also teaches inmates to respect rules, the rules of the game, but also the basic social rules that all citizens must follow. It's also about respecting others through games, solidarity, through sport and team playing. As a way to reduce repeat offences, sport is a good way of working on one's personal responsibility and personal investment. Sports give you an active role in life. You're no longer a mere spectator. It brightens up our days and gives us a framework, stretches our time inside and allows us to leave our cells. It's great. It gives you some balance and gives you also some hope. And it's really, really important for us being considered not uh, only by, uh, by being an inmate, but, but being a sport, sportsman and uh, just human being too. 
Well, I'm joined now by Carl Seyer and Dimitri Pouzo, who are both guards and sports coaches. Uh, hello, gentlemen. Thank you for being with us. Are there specific challenges to coaching people in prison? There's not much difference between coaching inmates and people on the outside, but you do have to take their life experience into consideration, whether they've been injured, for example. But being locked up does generate a lot of physical tension. Now, of course, sports is about well-being, but you, for example, work in a prison that is grossly overpopulated, like many prisons in France. How does that impact your work? In the Rochefort Detention Center, there's room for 53 inmates, but today there are 81. That means that we're at more than 150 percent capacity. It means we have to organize small groups of 12 prisoners because the gym can't accommodate more. As a result, some people can't take part for sheer lack of space. And are you hoping to make this type of event a regular occurrence? Yes, it's important for inmates to meet people from outside the prison walls. It boosts their self-confidence and morale for the rest of their time in jail. So we're leaving this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France Vinquette. We are journalists, and normally you have to listen to us, but you have things to tell us too. Maybe you've experienced a dramatic event, or you've got something important to say. You want to make a difference. That is why we created The Observers. Now, the first step is very easy. You get in touch with our team. Send us your images, tell us what you've seen. And then it's our job to get your voice out there, on our site, on social networks, on your mobiles and tablets, and on TV, of course. You can appear in our weekly show via webcam. Or perhaps we'll come see you in person, where you live, in your country, your town, and we'll work together on a report for our investigative show, The Observer's Direct. So you get the idea. This show is your show, your way to get your voice out to the world.